Would you like a free tool to automate your repetitive tasks? Of course you would. So let's set the scene. You've just landed your dream job as a new data analyst in a large firm and you've been brought in to report on weekly sales and volume. But this involves the following steps. Retrieving the data from an external folder or database and then cleaning the data for columns you don't want and adding extra columns for extra calculation. So what do you do? You get into work early on Monday morning or worse still, try to complete the task on Sunday evening. But nobody wants to do that. If that sounds like you, it's time you discover Power Query. So Power Query is a tool that can help you automate your data cleaning and transformation tasks. It can significantly save you time and reduce errors. In this next video, I'm going to show you how Power Query can help you quickly import, clean and transform your data so that you can focus on analyzing the insights. If you're ready to turbocharge your productivity, let's dive into Power Query. Here we are in Windows and we have our two weeks worth of sales data. So weeks one and weeks two, and then weeks three will drop in shortly. So let's just have a look at one of these files. So the file is laid out as follows. We have our invoice ID, our product line, our sales unit price, unit cost, and then quantity. Now there's a couple of things I want to do to this data in Power Query to clean it up. The first thing is I need to take the letter off the end of this ID as that relates to the branch ID. I also want to add columns for my sales, which would be my unit sales price multiplied by my quantity, but also my cost of goods, which would be my unit cost multiplied by my quantity. And then finally, my margin calculation, which would be my total sales less my margin overall. So let's go into Power Query and see how we would transform that data. So in a blank Excel worksheet, if we go to the top of the ribbon into the data tab and then move across to the left to get data. Now, this is effectively the Power Query screen and we have a number of options of where we can retrieve data from. So from file, from database, from Azure, etc. But for now, we're just going to select from file. Now you can also retrieve data from a PDF and I'll link a description to a video up the top for that. But for the moment, we're just going to take this from folder. Now I've already linked through the folder where my sales data is. So if I select the folder with the two files and then just hit open, that will bring us through to a screen, a navigator screen, which basically just tells us that Excel has found my two files. It also shows where it searched for those. And we have a number of options down below. So we have combine, load, or transform data. If we just wanted to load it into Excel, we would hit load, or if we wanted to transform the data, so modify anyway, we'd hit that. But for the moment, we actually want to combine these two files. So if I select that option, and then what I want to do is I want to combine and transform because I want to combine the two files together, but I also want to make some changes to some of the columns, adding calculations, etc. So if I select that option. This opens up another screen which we can now combine all our files. So on the top left here what it does is it defaults to my first file so my one of two files as a sample file and that will just give me a preview of what the data looks like. Down below here I've got the name of my tabs within my workbook so they're both called sales data. So if I select that that just previews what that data will look like when I pull that into Power Query. So I'm happy with that. Select OK. This loads up the Power Query editor and this is where the magic happens. So this is where we will effectively transform, manipulate and add value to our data. And it's also where all the steps will be recorded here on the right hand side. So if I just talk you through the screen on the left hand side here, it just has a list of helper queries within the Power Query Editor. And you can see down here under other queries, we have our sales data files. On the right hand side, again, we can see under the properties, the name of this query is going to be called the sales data file. And down below under applied steps, it will effectively log all of the steps that we do to transform our data and it will remember that. So it's almost like it's recording a VBA macro to remember all of the steps involved to get us to the data and what we need. 
Up the top of the ribbon is your standard Microsoft options and commands, which we'll be using to manipulate the data. And in the main preview screen, we have a subset of our data. So down below here, you'll see it previews the first 1000 rows. When we complete and load this from Power Query, that will apply to our whole data set. So not just the first 1000 rows. So what we can do is we can go in now and start to transform our data to the file that we want. So the first thing I'm going to do is it drops in the source file name within here. So sales data for week one. I don't want that in my end file. So what I'm going to do is remove that column. Then I'm just going to scroll across to the right. Now Power Query has brought in a number of additional columns here. So I'm just going to select those and remove those from my data set. What I need to add in here is a total sales column, which will be my unit sales price multiplied by my quantity. So if I select my unit sales price and my quantity columns, and what I'm going to do is go up to the ribbon here and I'm going to select add column. Then I'm going to go to the middle of the ribbon and under this standard option here, I'm going to select multiply. That will add a column to the very right hand side of Power Query. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of that to sales and hit return. That's my total sales calculation. I can do the same then for my cost. So my total cost is going to be my unit cost column multiplied by my quantity cost column. So if I select those two columns, and then again, under the add column tab, I'm going to select standard and then I'm going to select multiply. Again, that will add the column to the very right hand side of Power Query. And if I double click and just change the name of that to cost of goods and hit return. Now, the final calculation that I need to do is to bring in my margin calculation. So if I select my sales column first, and then I'm going to deduct my cost of goods from my sales. So again, under the add column tab, if I go to standard and, but this time I'm going to select subtract. That will effectively subtract the cost of goods from the sales, which leaves you with my margin. And if I double click in there and then just change the name of that, what I'm also going to do is scroll across to the left under this ID column here. Now, after the dash, there's a letter and that's the branch ID. So what I want to do is I want to separate that out into a separate column. So I'm going to select the column altogether and then I'm going to go back to my home tab and then I'm going to select split column. So under here, I've got various options on how I want to split data. But for the moment, I'm just going to select by delimiter. Now, Power Query is intuitive enough to know that it looks at the data and it decides, OK, do I want to split the column at my dash? So that's what it selects there. So I'm just going to hit OK to that. And now you can see that the invoice ID is split between two columns overall. Now, those column headers don't really work for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the second one and I'm going to call that branch ID on the first column. I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to take out my point one and hit return. So the final thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my sales, my cost of goods and my margin. So if I select those using the shift key, I'm just going to move those over to the left of my report. I'm just going to move them after my quantity column. So I'm pretty happy now with how that data looks. So I'm going to go up to the top of my ribbon and on the left hand side, I'm just going to select close and load. So back in Excel, we can see that our data has now been loaded into a table and you can see that the changes that we wanted to make have been implemented as well. So you can see we have a sales column and we have a cost of goods column and a margin column. And we can also see that the branch ID has been separated out from the invoice ID. And that Power Query has also combined our two tables and effectively applied the changes to both tables. So that saves me a lot of time instead of actually making the changes in each individual table. It's managed to do them both in one go. But the real benefit of Power Query is that these steps and changes have now saved into Power Query. 
so that when I add an extra week sales, all of those changes will automatically be applied and it'll be appended to the bottom of this table. So let's have a look. So within the sales data files, I can see that week three sales has now been loaded in. So if I go back into my Excel and if I just right mouse click and hit refresh, you can see that my three weeks have now been loaded up and all of my changes that I did for weeks one and two have automatically been applied for week three. So that'll save me a huge amount of time going forward. So Power Query really is a phenomenal tool. And even if you only learn a few aspects of it, it can really turbo boost your productivity and help you focusing on analyzing data instead of cleaning it and scrubbing it. If you learned anything on this video, please consider subscribing or give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.